Um, you know, the high inflation periods, like with the Weimar Republic in Germany, there was no such thing as a world's reserve currency. And that's, that's the, um, it's not um, correct to say the elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. That's the, um, the, the planet that's about to crash into the planet. Look at you. Amazing display. So the problem is we wow. all serialized. Too. That is nice. We just met, right? And uh, yep. you came here because of my channel? Yep. Is that right? Yeah. That is fantastic. I've been, I've been, I've been stacking now for probably six months. And yeah. I'm pretty well out of the bank. And I'm all in all in gold and silver and land and so so it's 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 been quite a quite a ride but i feel like the timing is right get ready for sd bullion's monster box sweepstakes that includes 500 silver eagles you could be the next lucky recipient of a phone call like this hi paul this is dr tyler wall ceo of sd bullion how are you doing today i'm doing great well, I'm calling you to let you know that you won the SD Bullion giveaway of a monster box of Silver Eagles. Well, thank you so much. This really day. made my day. So click the link below for your chance to win. Yep. I just, just feel like things are stacking up around the world. Everything is crashing, and I think gold and silver are going to be the last man standing. The last man so, standing, yep. Yeah. So. yep. So I'm just excited to have have this opportunity. So got yeah, all right nine now, of these at Tim. He had yeah. these, huh? He he got them in for me. These came from Italy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That is. I can see that. So they're pretty bored. That is. It's a chunky, it's, huh? It's very chunky. Does that feel like real wealth to you? It, it does. That's for real sure. Real money. Yep. Absolutely. I, it's just I've got I've got a bunch of. You know, I started with started with constitutional, and I've got okay. all the sovereign coins, and and I think I think this will put me pretty close to fifteen hundred ounces total. So, Fantastic. so so I feel like I've got a good that is really a, a good. good a good stack. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You also do gold too. Yep. Yep. We picked up we picked up a sizable pile of maple leaves, and so Tim's gonna. I gave him. I sent him a sent him a check, and he's going to fill, give me my change in 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 constitutional. Don't tell anybody. He's got a big pile of constitutional. Wait a minute. He, he got says, constitutional. He's got constitutional. I'm going to take. China, I'm going to take. I'm going to. Wait a gonna... minute. Yes, I know. Hold on. Does he have Tim? There's the secret. You got Secret's constitutional, out. man. No. Any silver quarters, maybe? I got lots of quarters, lots of dimes. I'm taking the dimes. <laughs> oh, you're taking the dimes. All right. Well, some of them. Good anyways. for you. What else do you think you're going to get? Um, right now, I, I, feel, I feel pretty comfortable. I'm, I'm just kind of keeping my bank account as minimal as I can to pay the bills and everything else that I don't need just goes into, goes into the metals. Be the bank. That's yep. what I call yep. it, right? Yep. Absolutely. Be your own bank. Yep. Only leave what's in there to pay your monthly expenses yep, and exactly. minimal, I, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're not missing out on much in, <laughs> interest, are you? No, so no, it's, no. it's just not worth the risk yeah. in my mind. Not at all. It's, yep. it's everything that I've acquired so far has already gone up in value way more than. Can you imagine a bank holiday? Can you imagine what that would be like to head to your bank and well, say, my, my boom, grandpa, sorry. My, nope, can't get your cash out. What was it 90 years ago? My grandfather was working the docks, working in out in the North Pacific Northwest, and he was a boat builder and he was down the dock launching one of his new boats. And an old Indian friend of his came running down the dock. This is this is March 3rd, I think, of mm -hmm. 1933. And the Indian said, Ronald, go get your money out of the bank. And he went up the street. And turned in his water. turned in his gold certificates and everything he had. Took his money out. He's the only one in town that got his money out. There was a a bank closure that started in the state of Washington that weekend, and then it turned into a two week bank closure by the feds after that. And he he it, it was all gone. But but we have FDIC insurance now. That can't possibly oh, yeah. ever happen again, right? Oh, I'm sure we're all protected if things go bad by the FDIC. I'm sure they've got 
just loads of loads of cash and gold and silver to pay us all yeah, back. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah. So you uh, you come to Tim's too? First time I'm here with my son. For, yeah. This is your first. First time, yeah. He's been watching the YouTube videos and everything. Oh, and I work up the street. Perfect. Oh, That's great. what are you planning on picking up? Silver? Um, I'm just watching the whole pr process. And <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're watching, <laughs> and, watching learning. and learning. And, yeah. And uh, like I said, I work out by every day, so one day I might just stop in and. Yeah. Do my own thing. Oh, and your son too? Is he? Is he? Interested? He's been buying. Oh yeah, no, he's oh, been so buying. Oh, so he's been buying. He's been buying. Good so for him. Stuff in. And he's visiting with me this week. So. Yeah. Wow, that's great. that is great. Yeah, but so did you clean him out of bars? I, he got this is all everything he could get in those in those oh, kilos. Oh, he's got some pickings there. showing there. <laughs> Maybe there's something in the uh, might have more in the magic safe. In the magic safe. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Actually, I I just gave him one to turn into constitutional, so oh. we might be able to talk him out of that one. Mm. It's a possibility. I don't know. I'm still not sure I'm on good terms with him. <laughs> But it is my birthday today, Tim. Oh, happy so birthday! So you gotta, you gotta cut me some slack today, right? All right, I'll only charge you more than anybody else today. Oh my goodness! <laughs> You've got some stuff here. Yeah, so most of it's foreign, and and the the buffaloes have all been produced here. But um, this is this is from Golden State Mint. We probably got that in January, February. Um, most of those mints are just not shipping anything. So we're getting lots of stuff from Italy, for example. We can get bars from uh, Turkey. We can even get some from Korea. Well, I said, are they actually made in Korea? He said, I don't have any idea. So foreign silver. Foreign silver, yeah. That's Turkey fantastic. and Italy are probably the ones that we're going to be getting most of the bars from. I gotta ask you a question, Tim. Oh, wait, another question. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Now that it's quiet, the phone's not ringing. There's no more lines. I won't interrupt you now because I get all kinds of crap from people saying, "Don't cut Tim off." Yeah, wait thirty seconds for the phone to ring. <laughs> it seems like the U.S. is starting to run out of everything. Uh, during the pandemic, you remember toilet paper, right? Ketchup packets, garden gnomes, uh, you know, semiconductors, cars. But now I'm seeing like shortages of like peanut butter, coffee. I just read about baby formula being hard to find. Uh, rubber, sand. That one I had a hard time wrapping my mind around. I guess sand is the second most consumed resource on the planet next to water. They're, they're running short on sand, even though it seems like it's everywhere. It's crazy. So then... It Nice white sand on the beaches is going to start to disappear, huh? That makes very nice looking concrete. Yes, they use it for, you know, building material, making glass, all that kind of stuff. So evidently it's a, it's a shortage. We do seem like we're running short on everything. At Hannaford's, I couldn't get at least just a, a short list of things. Sugar packets. Okay, they're missing. And, um, you know, that nothing, even no space on the shelf for them. Um, I get two uh, bird's eye vegetable packs. One's the, the shredded Brussels sprouts and the other was uh, the shredded um, uh, broccoli and carrots, okay? And I, you know, I mix those with potatoes or something like that when I'm trying to stay on my diet. Uh -huh. um, they were both missing. Uh, let's see. Um, Land O'Lakes, fat-free, half and half, was missing. Uh, let's say uh, bounty towels were missing. Now, the paper towels have been filling the shelves, but then when they run out of what's there, they're not replacing them. Uh, but it, it is, as you said, it's different items, but it's also different stores. I went to Shaw's just because I happened to be in that, mo that mall over in Londonderry, and they had all the things that I couldn't find at Hannaford's. The price was quite a bit higher. In fact, um, those two vegetable packs, uh, they were close to $5, and they used to be 250 to $3. So I don't know if it's the management of the market that says, oh, that's too expensive. We don't want to put those on the shelf. 
or if it's the suppliers or the distributors. Um, I think everybody is having problems in their own way. Uh, keep in mind that things like um, American Eagles come from the U.S. Mint, <laughs> but they go through their distributors. And if, um, if let's say one of those distributors orders uh, 100 monster boxes and they get 10, then the price is going up. Uh, because if you're trying to make a living by satisfying the d delivery needs of the U.S. Mint and you're not getting anything, the prices are going up. Um, the, the, the saddest thing about all of it is we were energy independent. Mm. And um, that's the biggest hole in the economy. The energy drives every economy in the world. doesn't matter if it's, you know, the American economy or South America or you know, Europe. It drives every economy. And if you don't realize, if you don't have fossil fuels, you don't have anything made of plastic. Um, you don't have a lot of the chemicals they put into pharmaceuticals. Uh, there are just so many things that come from petroleum. Um, you know, Containers, bags, things like we, that are going that up stuff. through the roof, yeah, right? And it's and it that hurts everybody. Um, but you know what? What else do you see? Well, pretty soon roads won't be repaired because they can't get the asphalt, or, um, and so they'll come up with concrete patches. Those last about a month. Um, it just it affects everything. Yeah. So when you try to shut down, we're going to shut down the fossil fuel business. Huh? <laughs> That's the most idiotic statement I've ever heard a president make. Uh, because it, it does, isn't just gasoline for cars. That's a small part of it, a very small part of it. And um, sure, we all like to drive electric cars, but if you don't have petroleum, you can't make even batteries. Uh, and it, the whole thing is just insane. Plus, if we... If everybody drove electric cars, what would happen to the electrical grid that is in, in shambles in places like California? You know, they, mm -hmm. they, they say they're shutting it down because they don't want to start forest fires. Well, that's not really why they're shutting it down. They're allocating it to different areas and different situations. Um, but, you know, you can always go get solar panels. I have a friend who has solar Which panels. Which is full of silver, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> no. yeah. You have a friend, what? He, who put in solar panels, and I said, so how much, of, what percentage of the electricity does it supply? He said, oh, 94%. I said, really? He said, wow. yeah, in the daytime. Because of the cost of um, fuels, mining costs are going up dramatically for everything. Now, you know, copper mining and, you know, nickel mining, they're on a different scale than gold and silver mining. Um, hmm. yeah, so you, if you're, if you're making a uh, million dollars, you can afford to spend, um, you know, 600,000 to pull it out of the ground, but, um, it's getting to be tight for every kind of mining just because it all consumes so much fuel. Hmm. You know, it's inflation like this affects everything and oh it's mr spam risk he calls me all the time he's not buying precious metals no right? he doesn't yeah. buy anything he just <laughs> likes to annoy me <laughs> they don't consider the ramifications of anything that's why uh, there are the things that people don't know about environmentalists okay you know they don't have any fracking in europe fracking for natural gas and we have this huge marcellus uh uh, field out there, uh, gas field in, you know, it's upstate New York, all of Pennsylvania, it goes into West Virginia, it's got all that whole area has a huge amount of natural gas. And of course, most of it is, have to, you know, you have to get it out of the ground by fracking, uh, which they don't allow in New York State. So, I mean, they have huge reserves in New York State, but I think they may have tapped these a long time ago. But, um, in Europe, they don't have any fracking. And it's because of environmental groups that were well-funded to go around and rally against fracking and talk to all the legislators, to the, you know, and all the different uh, European countries to eliminate fracking. Who do you think funded these people? It's an absolute truth. George Soros? I don't know who. No, 
Vladimir Putin. Oh my word. And the reason he funded them was because he effectively, effectively eliminated his competition by banning fracking in Europe, okay? So he funded all these environmental groups to go out and protest and, and lobby the, all the legislatures against fracking. I think that if history repeats itself, we may be headed towards a crack up boom. Uh, I think we could see our bank accounts suddenly, you know, increase in fiat currency and all the shelves are empty. I was reading a little bit uh, of, from this Austrian economist uh, in the past, Ludwig von Mises. I don't know if you've heard of him before. I've heard the name. He's the one who coined the phrase um, uh, crack up boom. You know, with the high inflation periods, like with the Weimar Republic in Germany, there was no such thing as a world's reserve currency. And that's, that's the, um, it's not um, correct to say the elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. That's the, um, the, the planet that's about to crash into the planet. And, you know, it's, uh, other countries other than Russia and China and, and it's, it's like countries in the Middle East will start working out their own currency, trade currencies. Yep. Well, and, I think we're going to see that. I think we're going to see a crack up boom. Well, it's definitely affecting travel. And, um, you know, we're, we're going to be going to Miami for the the new Miami Grand Prix in May. That's like weeks, two and a half weeks of, yeah. away. And uh, the plane tickets are <laughs> outrageous. Now, how many people, of all the places to go in the country, how many people go to Florida? Lots. Okay. Uh, and the plane tickets have gone up dramatically. Um that's kind of a that's a necessary factor of inflation, um, but also it's everything. You know, it affects the airlines. The cost of aviation fuel affects the airlines dramatically. Um, the fact that they uh, maybe send a plane up in the sky with uh, less than a full capacity, uh, they're cutting back on enough flights, so that doesn't happen. Direct flights are dropping too. Well, it depends on where, because you got to get up to that 35,000 feet so you can coast the rest of the way. You're not burning any fuel. Right? Um, yeah, it's, every, then, then when you get off the plane, you got to figure out how to get to your hotel. And, um, you know, so that cost goes up. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's an Uber or a taxi or a bus. Those costs are going up. Everything all along the way goes up. Because if you include... Just fuel in the inflation numbers, you're talking 30% or higher. And they don't. We, they just, don't. Got the new, yeah. we just got the new number. What was it, 8.5? 8, 8, 8.4 or 5, yeah. And um, that's, that's so because bogus. they don't include food or energy, mm -hmm. which is insane because that's what affects everything. And, you know, and they also calculate rent in a bizarre and disingenuous way. They, owners equivalent rent. Have you heard of that? Owners, I think I heard yeah, they ask definitely. owners, well, what would you charge to rent? It, it, just, <laughs> just go out and get the, the figures. They don't have to play that game, but they want to. Well, if you're owner-occupied, your rents are probably going to be a little less than if you're, you know, you, you stand like next door. He's had to raise his rents, and he has half capacity now. But politicians on the left think that if they throw money around, that creates votes. Mm -hmm. Um they don't understand that if you think you're getting, you know, a million more votes from those people coming across the southern border, that's what's going to backfire. Mm -hmm. And if you have a um, an economy that has a major uh, catastrophe, what happens to all those people? I mean, they're not, definitely not getting jobs, um, but they they got to live. And um, I mean, it's just. Everything that's being done now is so bad. They could have prevented a lot of what's going on in the world. I mean, diplomacy in the beginning from the United States could have prevented this war in Ukraine. Okay, and sure. I, don't, I don't mean send um, Biden to talk to Putin because Putin would just laugh him off. I mean, you know, take somebody who you know, Pompeo was an excellent person. Yeah. You know, he were. Because uh, he understands everything about Putin and everything about Russia, and you know how to how to draw the map. You say, okay, if you do this, this, and this, 
this is what's going to happen. Oh, they are shiny. Look at that. They are really shiny. Even the old ones are shiny. So they cleaned them. Hmm. Oh, geez. How did that get in? That's great. <laughs> oh, oh, I see what you're trying to do to me. No, it's not. <laughs> That was done to me. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't yeah. know. I, I, I I'll tell you I, what. Let me. Uh, I like get dirty. These, let I me like, get these out here, and then you can check and make sure they're no more Canadian. I here. like dirty. Uh, Constitution. So, some of them are dirty. Huh? Some are dirty. Yeah, it's good. Shows there. I don't more, have. More have to be legit. If I don't have full roll, I'm gonna have to break out the bag that I have. Get the bag. Sixty-four. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay, so we can. Uh, that's it, right? Here. If anybody watching my channel comes in and gets quarters, you'll be happy, right? Yeah, as long as I take the whole bag. <laughs> it's, uh, Two hundred forty-eight grams. It's supposed to be. Nailed it. <laughs> That's nice. Uh, and it's not like I don't like Standing Liberties. That's pretty cool. I can't see the date, though. Yeah. Hey. That's why they throw them in there. <laughs> so right. you've got um, some nice shiny ones in there. Thank you. And no Canadian. Thank you very much. I hope everybody frequents the coin and stamp shop. Definitely check out the description of the video for his contact info. Call him. It's amazing that that phone has not rung again. But give him a ring. Chat with him. He's a wealth of information, knowledge, and he'll do right by you. That's right. And, you know, when we can't get anything, either I'll do a lot of paperwork, maybe some yard work, <laughs> or just move to another country. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, don't I'm go not, anywhere. I'm not going anywhere. All right, cool. Thanks, Tim.